Hello everyone. Uh, welcome to the course uh, Advanced Logic Synthesis. Uh, first of all, let me introduce myself. Uh, my name is Dheeraj Taneja. I work for for Broadcom Technologies Hyderabad. Uh, I have been working uh, in this industry for past 11 years now. I did my graduation from Bits Pilani in 2002 in electronics engineering. Let Let's first see what uh, what all we would study in this course. Uh, the objective of this course is to study the components of digital design that is the gates various sorts of combination and sequential gates that that make up the digital design and then learn uh, the process of converting the the higher level uh, design which is written in an hdl uh, like verilog or vhdl into the gates using uh, the process is called synthesis. So we'll see the basic. We'll start with basics of synthesis, and go on to see the advanced concepts of synthesis. So this uh, course is divided into five major units. Unit one and unit two are uh, carried over from the course VLSI design. So they are uh, more or less a refresher uh, course into the MOS transistor. How the uh, what is the what are the transfer characteristics of PMOS and NMOS? How they are combined into a CMOS and uh, how the gates are built using CMOS? We will see basics of layout. Uh, we will see stick diagrams, uh, which are, a, are the representation of layout. Then uh, unit two, we will see uh, we will study about the uh, different logic families uh, that make up the digital design. Uh, like NMOS logic, uh, ratio logic, pseudo NMOS, transmission gates, and so on. We'll also uh, look at how do we calculate the propagation delay, or how do we estimate the propagation delay of a cell. We'll see different kind of uh, combinational and sequential logics, uh, logic design techniques. Then uh, unit three onwards, we would look into the process of synthesis. We we'll look into what are libraries? What are different kind of views? How do we? Uh, we'll also see how do we write RTL code and what construct what construct of RTL corresponds to whatever what part of the digital design. Uh, then we'll see how to we'll see the whole process of synthesis. Unit four we'll see uh, we'll visit some advanced techniques of synthesis. Uh, Let's say you are not meeting your design constraints. What else could we do? What more can we do in synthesis to make sure that our design meets the performance goals? Unit five is a very interesting topic called timing analysis. Uh, this is the this is a technique which is employed industry-wise to make sure that the design uh, meets the performance requirements of a particular technology node. The uh, the course out at the end of this course, a participant should be able to write a basic RTL code and synthesize it by setting constraints. By uh, you should be able to validate the results and analyze the different synthesis reports. You should be able to uh, synthesize a design which has some targets like area and timing. Uh, you should be able to perform critical path synthesis if required. And then, uh, lastly, you should be able to perform timing analysis on the synthesized necklace. Uh, the uh, if time permits, we will also look at the functional equivalence, which uh, th this is the process by which we make sure that the netlist, the gate level netlist that we get out of synthesis, actually is functionally equivalent to the RTM. So this makes sure that whatever commands we give to the tool have the desired effect. Uh, the let me go back to the slides. Okay. And the references for this course are uh, first of all we'll use uh, the synopsis recommended course material and lectures. Uh, we'll use a design compiler and prime time user guide uh, for units three, four, and five. Then there are a couple of books which you you can refer to. One, the most famous one of which is Digital Design by Maurice Mano. 
and then uh, there's a book of fundamental of digital circuits by A. Anand. Uh, the unit one and two lecture slides are derived from the VLSI design lecture slides, which are uh, prepared by uh, Professor David Harris, and they are available at this link. They are they are freely available for download. I would recommend each one of you to download this course material. It's a very useful course material for VLSI design. Then the tentative course plan is this: the, uh, the number of hours I plan to spend on each unit. So as you can see, the unit one and two uh, combine uh, is uh, when unit three, four, and five is the majority of the course, which is expected, since unit one and two are more of a refresher uh, material. We should be focusing a lot more on synthesis and timing analysis. That is why unit three and five are heavily loaded. A unit three, four, and five also have a lab lab work involved, since a lot of it is should be practical in nature. The theory is a minimal part. Let's start with unit one. Unit one, we will uh, assume that everybody is familiar with the basic working of MOS transistor. But unit one, we'll uh, again go back to MOS transistor and see and just visit how, see how it works. Uh, mostly, uh, what we are concerned about is how a MOS transistor works as a switch, since that is the functionality we use most in the digital design. Uh, so we are looking at integrated circuits, uh, which means there are many, many transistors on a, on one chip. Very large scale integration means, it, in today's world, it means billions of transistors on a single chip. The most popular technique for manufacturing VLSI design circuits is complementary metal oxide semiconductor, uh, which is in, in short form it's called CMOS. Why is it most popular? Is because it's fast, it's cheap. And it's it has low power. Uh, there obviously there are circuit circuits which are faster than CMOS. There are also uh, circuits which have low power than lower power than CMOS. But when we combine the all the three characteristics, that is the speed, the cost of manufacturing, and the power, in all three when combined together, CMOS scores heavily. That is why it is most popular nowadays. Uh, we'll see how to build our own CMOS chip. That is, in in first part, we'll see how CMOS is used to manufacture gates, different kind of gates. We will look very briefly into transistor layout. Uh, we will not look into fabrication in this course. Uh, we will look uh, the the layouts are not not very uh, very big part of this course. We'll just uh, see the basics. Uh, how uh, how do we how how does the layout look like? What information does it convey? And we look briefly into stick diagrams, which is a a, a paper way of doing doing layouts. Uh, the tools do not uh, the stick diagrams are no, not used in CAD tools, but for our own sake, when we want to represent a layout on paper. Then rest of the course we see uh, by that uh, how to build a good CMOS chip using the process of synthesis and timing analysis. Uh, let's begin with. Uh, let's have a quick look at the silicon lattice. Uh, silicon is the most popular material for VLSI designs. Uh, the transistors are grown out of a silicon substrate by method of deposition and etching. Silicon, being a group form material, is a uh, is closely is forms a closely bonded crystal lattice with four of its immediate neighbors. The the silicon. If you see the diagram, the each silicon molecule is Bonded to four nearest uh, silicon molecules, uh, uh, silicon atoms to form a, form a crystal lattice. Silicon, uh, it's neither a conductor nor an insulator; it's a semiconductor. Pure silicon uh, does not have any carriers because all the four bonds are satisfied. There are no free electrons available. It's it's a very poor conductor. The the prop uh, we. Uh, Group three or group five elements are added to silicon to increase the conductivity. These are called dopants. Dopants, uh, a dopant is nothing but an impurity added to silicon to increase its conductivity. So when a group five element like phosphorus or boron is added to uh, silicon, 
that uh, it contributes an extra electron per atom and uh, correspondingly the uh, free electrons are available and the conductivity increases this type of uh, material is called n type silicon if on the other hand if group 3 uh, element is added to silicon is doped there is a deficiency of electron which is called a hole this type of material is called p type the most uh, fundamental uh, the most basic circuit that can be built out of a p type and an n type device is a diode a diode is a junction between a p type and an n type semiconductor the current flows only in one direction uh, so on the n type there are there's an excess of electrons on the p type there's an excess of holes the electrons flow from n to p therefore the current the conventional current flows from p to n so p acts as an anode and uh, n type acts as a cathode so the the important point to to uh, i'm sure everybody knows it but the thing to remember here is that the current can only flow in one direction from the p to n type now the extension of a diode is a transistor now a transistor is uh, is made up of four terminals gate source drain and body many times uh, in textbooks or uh, in 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 many times you would see uh, in the matter that discusses a uh, transistor many times the body uh, terminal is uh, usually not discussed but in in terms of uh, when we talk about fabrication or when we talk about the cmos gates this body becomes a very important terminal uh, so uh, let, let's see how how nmos looks like so there's a n plus these and this n plus means that this is a heavily doped n region on a substrate which is a p type material a plus sign usually it denotes that the region is heavily doped for example this is the the notation here says p there's no plus sign so that means it's likely doped compared to the n, n plus region there are two terminals called source and drain which connect to the heavily doped n plus region in case of mos transistors uh, the the source and drains are interchangeable you can use anything for source and anything for drain then there's a a, a strip of uh, insulator which is silicon dioxide and over silicon dioxide a uh, a strip of polysilicon or or a metal uh, right now the most popular technique is depositing polysilicon so this this acts as one more terminal called gate so if you see that the uh, the body of uh, the body of the uh, the device that is the substrate and gate are conductors silicon dioxide is the insulator that is why it is called metal oxide semiconductor although the gate is no longer in today's technology the gate is no longer made of made of metal it is made of polysilicon which is a variety of silicon that is a very good conductor just like a, a copper metal let's see the operation of uh, the nmos transistor so usually uh, the body is tied to ground so this this p substrate is at zero volt now when the gate is at low voltage there is the and p type is already on low voltage at zero the diodes p and n plus they are see if there are the two diodes here uh, from the substrate to each of the source and drain since the voltage at p is low and there is there is no channel here that both the diodes are off there is no current flow and the transistor is off however there is although a very weak channel between the two n plus regions that is between source and drain which can lead to a very very small leakage current now this leakage current used to be almost negligible in older technologies okay by by technology i mean the the width of this channel so this width of this channel is decreasing year by year so this is now into nanometer range so when it was 
when this channel length was bigger, the the, the bigger the channel length, the the weaker the the channel here. So in today's technology, this is so small that the leakage current, that is, even when the gate is at low voltage, the small current, that is the leakage current, is now significant part of the power dissipation. We will see that later when we come to the uh, the power analysis as part of synthesis. But for uh, discussion sake, we can assume that whenever gate is at low voltage, uh, no current flows and the transistor is off. Now, when the gate, when we start increasing the voltage on the on the gate, the electrons in this uh, P region, they are attracted. The negative charge is attracted to body. So what happens is that there is an a channel of electrons which gets formed between the two n plus region because of the high voltage at the gate. This channel is called an inversion layer. Why is it called an inversion layer? It's because the material is P type, but the the carriers, the carriers here are and are electrons. So it is called an inversion channel. This inversion channel is actually responsible for the current flow between source and drain. So now the current can flow through the n-type silicon through this channel, and we say that the transistor is on. Now a PMOS transistor is uh, very similar to NMOS transistor. It's just that the voltages that turn on and turn off the transistor are complementary. So in in P type substrate was tied to zero. Here the N type substrate is tied to VDD. VDD is nothing but the high voltage. Uh, the gate, whenever gate is low, the transistor is on. Whenever the gate is high, the transistor is off. The bubble in the symbol here it indicates that it is inverted to that of as compared to NMOS. If we revisit the NMOS symbol, there is no bubble here. However, PMOS is a bubble. Now this uh, let's come to VDD. What does VDD mean? So VDD in 1980s VDD used to mean 5 volts, but as the technology has decreased, the devices have shrunk in size. So a higher VDD, as high as 5 volts, will damage the tiny transistors. So that is why, along with decreasing technology, the VDD is also decreasing. This also results into lower v, uh, into lower power. Uh, so this is this uh, this line shows the pro progression of VDD. So right now, uh, for most of the technologies uh, which are in production now, use one volt. Some even use 0 0.9, 0 0.8 volts for operation. Uh, this is why you see. Uh, the prevalence of battery power devices, uh, the battery power devices are only possible because the VDD is low. If VDD was as high as 5 volts, uh, the battery would exhaust very quickly. Now, uh, so the uh, let us look at transistors when they are uh, behaving as switches. So, a MOS is nothing but a transistor, a, a switch which is controlled by the gate voltage. Since the voltage at gate controls pass from source to drain, so here, here we see that in MOS, whenever the gate is zero, G is zero, the drain to source connection is broken and the transistor is off. Similarly, when gate is one, the drain to source connection is is uh, the drain to source current flows and the gate is on. PMOS is nothing but complementary of NMOS. Uh, whenever gate is zero, the transistor is on. Whenever gate is one, the transistor is off. So here we see that uh, the, the NMOS and PMOS both behave as switches whenever the voltage on gate is toggled from 0 to VDD. Let us look at a very popular, the most popular and the basic device which is CMOS inverter. Now it is called CMOS because on the top it contains a PMOS connected to an NMOS at the bottom. The source of PMOS is connected to VDD. The source of NMOS is connected to ground. This PMOS device is also called a pull-up device since it 
it is connected to VDD and it pulls A to VDD in a particular case. Similarly, this NMOS device is called a pull down device since it connects A to ground in, in one of the conditions. Now, let us look at the trip table what happens when A is 0 or what happens when A is 1 ok, when A is 1 the NMOS here let us remember that whenever gate is 1, so the gate of the gates of both NMOS and PMOS are tied together to form A, whenever this gate is 1 on a, or on a higher voltage the NMOS will turn on and PMOS will be off, in this case NMOS being on it pulls A to it, it pulls Y to 0, so that is why it is also called a pull down device A is 1 and Y is 0 which is a typical inverter functionality, similarly when A becomes 0 the NMOS switches off PMOS switches on and PMOS switching on pulls Y to 1 or Y to VDD, so that, that is why PMOS is also called a pull up device. Okay, let us look at a, a slightly more complex uh, gate which is the NAND gate, so in NAND gate in case of NAND gate uh, there are two and uh, this, this is a two input NAND gate, so in, in CMOS technology always one input will correspond to one pair of comprising each of an NMOS and a PMOS transistor, so since it is a two input gate for each input you have one PMOS and one NMOS, so let us see how they are connected together, the NMOS uh, the pull down circuit is a series connection of NMOS, the pull up circuit is a parallel connection of PMOS, this is the logic symbol the, uh, any anything can represent an NAND gate any of these two, now let us look at the truth table, whenever both A and B are 0 the pull down circuit uh, both NMOS are off and both of the PMOS are on, so the output is 1, whenever any of A or B is 1, the NMOS one of the NMOS becomes on, but since the other one is 0 the connection is never made, however on the pull up side whenever any of this is 0, this means 0 means that PMOS is on and since it is a parallel connection it pulls Y to 1, so condition A0 B1 is similar to condition A1 and B0 that is one of the PMOS is on and one of and it pulls the Y it puts pulls Y to 1, to pull Y to 0 both these NMOS should be on that is both A and B should be 1, so, uh, so what we see here is that when the gate type is NAND let us say the pull down represents the complementary functionality of a NAND gate, the complement of uh, a NAND gate is nothing but an NAND gate, so the pull down circuit will be nothing is, is is the series connection of that is series means AND gate is a series connection of the complement of the gate we want to achieve, uh, we look look uh, at this concept in detail later, let us look at one more example of uh, the combinational gate which is the CMOS NOR gate, now it is uh, just the complement of NAND gate, uh, here the NMOS are into parallel and PMOS are in series, so since PMOS is in series, so A and B both have to be 0 to pull Y to 1, so if you look at the truth table here A and when A and B both are 0 then only these two PMOS will switch on and Y will be connected to VDD, either of A and B being 1 or when both are 1 the NMOS turns on one of the NMOS are both turn on and Y is pulled down to 0. So if we, if we notice here that uh, the basic gates in CMOS technology are inverter, NAND and NOR, whenever let us say you want to make an AND gate 
what you have to do is connect an inverter there will be an inverter stage after the NAND stage. So that means a two input AND gate will have more will use up more transistors than a two input NAND gate that is two transistors extra for one inverter. So we see that uh, the CMOS uh, technology is basically an inverted uh, inverted logic that is all the basic gates which are lowest in area and lowest in transistor count are nothing but in, uh, they are either inverters uh, uh, that is inverter NAND and NOR these are the basic gates all other combinational gates are made out of these three gates. So if you remember your, if your basic electronics this is the reason why NAND and NOR are also called universal gates. Okay, this is an example of a three input NAND gate it is very similar to two input uh, the only difference being that one more input adds one more pair of transistors. So, um, since it is a NAND gate so as I discussed earlier the pull down network will be the complement of uh, that is it will be the AND connection of the NMOS that is all the NMOS will be in series the PMOS will be in parallel. Also uh, if you notice that the connections are uh, the PMOS connections and the NMOS connections are always complementary that is if the NMOS is in series the PMOS will be in parallel and the other way around. Okay, uh, let us look briefly at uh, how the circuits are laid out. So, whenever the, uh, the, the VSI design is manufactured, it is manufactured using a set of masks. What a mask means, uh, a, a mask is, uh, is like a photograph, uh, like a photograph is developed from a negative you can say that mask is a negative from which the positive that is the photograph or the VLSI circuit is made out. Now the minimum dimensions of mask they determine the transistor size, size and in turn they determine the speed the cost and the power of the circuit. There is one a very important term called feature size F which is the distance between source and drain it is also the it is determined by the minimum width of polysilicon it is also called the channel it is also called channel length usually uh, it is seen that feature size improves 30 percent over three every three years or so. So, uh, the layout is uh, usually is, is normalized using feature size and the all the design rules that is how let us say how wide the polysilicon would be what should be the minimum distance between the two n plus regions everything is determined on the basis of the feature size f. Uh, here we define one more term which is called lambda which is feature size by 2 for example for a for a, for a 0 0.6 micrometer process the lambda would be 0 0.3 micrometer we will we'll see how lambda is used in layouts later. Now, uh, for example, we, we see that uh, there are uh, these are simplified design rules. Uh, these are an example of design rules. For example, this is let's say you have a metal deposition. Um, a metal one and metal two are uh, they are made up of same material, uh, only that the orientation might be different and the width might be different. That is, if let's say metal two metal one is being routed in horizontal directions it might happen that the metal 2 is routed in vertical direction. Uh, so, the material is same the only thing that can differ is the width. So, let us say one of the design rule can be that uh, the spacing between two metals should be at least 4 lambda the width should be at least 4 lambda. So, these are nothing but examples of uh, the, the design rules which are normalized on the basis of feature size or lambda. Let us let us look at uh, uh, can you pause for a minute ok now let us look at uh, the inverter cross section uh, that is when the inverter is laid out and manufactured how does it look like on on layout. So, as we remember as we go back and see that the inverter is made up of a PMOS and an NMOS. 
so this is this part is the n mos transistor and this part is the p mos transistor typically uh, the substrate that is the silicon uh, wafer uh, is doped and uh, with p type material uh, with with a group 3 impurity to make a p substrate since n mos transistor needs a p substrate the n wells that is the uh, sorry the uh, the n plus dope the regions can be directly uh, diffused here to make the to uh, the source and drain of the n mos transistor now p mos on the other hand would need a n type substrate so on the same p type substrate doping is done to make a region called n well n well is uh, now the n well here acts as a substrate for the p mos transistor Again, for PMOS, uh, for source and drain, we need P plus region, so they are formed here uh, using the process of diffusion. So this, uh, as an inverter, the the source of the NMOS transistor is tied to ground. If you remember, so here we see this is a metal contact. This metal. Uh, so uh, any time we want to make a contact of the source and drain to anything. We need to take. We need to connect it to a metal layer. So here we see the, the. If you see the legend, this is the blue is metal one. So here we see that metal one is connected to the to ground. This is nothing but the source of NMOS transistor. Similarly, the source of PMOS transistor is connected to VDD again using the metal layer. Now we go back and remember that. The input to inverter is given using the gates. That is, the gate of NMOS and PMOS is tied together to form the input. Input A. So here we see that this this region here in the middle is uh, nothing but polysilicon. That is, uh, so this uh, this cross section is a, a vertical cross section. So this uh, this is a, a, a imagine a three dimensional figure a three dimensional layout so the gate here and the gate here is is actually connected here somewhere behind they both are connected to form the input a the silicon dioxide here acts as an insulator now the output again both the the drains drain of in MOS and drain of PMOS is connected together to form the output. So the input is always the gate, and the output is always from the drain. The gate of the gates of both transistors connected together, and correspondingly the drains of both transistors connected together to form the output. So this is a cross section of the of the inverter. Now uh, this wheel will. Uh, We'll see the uh, these when we see the stick. Uh, we will not see much of design rules in this course. Uh, the design rules are very specific to technology, and very specific to the kind of layout. Uh, so the, the picture here, uh, this this picture represents the the, uh, the 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 inverter layout. So this is the cross section, and this is also uh, this is the uh, side view, and this is the top view of the of the layout. So let let's look at this. So the bottom part is the NMOS, and the top part is PMOS. The the how can we differentiate? We see that the region here is is N well. So a PMOS you needs an N well to function. So this is this part is PMOS. The rail here, this rail is the metal rail. The rail here up on the top and on the bottom. So the bottom one would be this rail would be tied to ground. This would be tied to VDD. The contacts here, uh, the contacts here are source and drain contacts. So this uh, this part is the uh, both the drains are connected together. And uh, so this uh, on on the if you see on the NMOS side, this is the source which is tied to ground these are the diffusion regions again this drain is connected to the pmos drain again diffusion regions 
uh, sorry this is the diffusion region again the uh, source of PMOS is connected to VDD here this uh, is the way the gates are connected together this is the polysilicon material so the poly of PMOS and the poly of NMOS they both are connected together so the gates are connected so this is the input part uh, sorry this is the input part and this is this is where we apply the input voltage this is where we get the output so uh, the transistor dimensions are specified as uh, width uh, divided by length I mean that is uh, this is the notation we use so minimum size is 4 lambda by 2 lambda uh, if we remember go back and say see the uh, the lambda was the feature size by 2 so feature size is the minimum width minimum channel width a technology can have since lambda is equal to f by 2 uh, f is nothing but 2 lambda so the minimum width that can that a technology can have is 2 lambda that is why the statement here says that the minimum size can be 4 lambda by by 2 lambda sometimes it is called one unit for example in f uh, in 0 0.6 micrometer process it would be 1.2 micrometer wide and 0 0.6 micrometer long usually uh, to start with we keep the width as twice of the length so uh, if you see uh, again this is the inverter layout and the proper polarities are marked vdd gnd a and y uh, if you notice here that uh, so the the NMOS here has the minimum size which is 4 by 2 and PMOS is 8 by 2 that is the PMOS width is twice of the NMOS width we will see why this is needed uh, okay let me uh, discuss this in, in, in short for now the PMOS usually for the same width and length the PMOS is slower than NMOS due to the fact that the host mobility is less than the electron mobility. So usually the factor is uh, uh, less than 2 but we, we just round off and say that uh, the PMOS is half uh, is uh, slower than NMOS by a factor of 2. So to compensate for that factor. Uh, and to make the inverter balance that is to make sure that both the NMOS and PMOS are of similar strength the, the PMOS is usually made twice uh, the, the PMOS width is twice that of the NMOS width so that is why everywhere you will see that the PMOS is designated as 2 and NMOS is designated as 1 or, or uh, always the factor is 2 is to 1 okay this is uh, um, so this was what we saw in this uh, chapter was the uh, very basic nature uh, of the MOS uh, circuit how the MOS is made up of gate oxide and silicon uh, the functionality we are most interested in is uh, the whenever uh, the MOS acts as a switch since all the basic logic gates can be made out of a combination of switches we saw the, the inverter layout and this gave us an idea into how the circuit is laid out obviously at a very basic level now uh, from next uh, uh, chapter onwards we look at how uh, we will we'll also look at look at a bit into the, uh, the transfer characteristics of PMOS and NMOS because this will again uh, give us uh, insight into how the propagation delays are calculated we will also see how various kinds of com complex gates are made out of PMOS and NMOS uh, plus we will see also the logic families different kind of logic families that make up the gates uh, this ends chapter 1 thanks a lot then you can pause the recording.